Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you doing? I would like to share with you today some thoughts I have on the power of humility. By the way, it's such a pleasure to follow Mr. Belter and my good friend, Danae. Congratulations, Danae, on your new position. So, as I start out, I say, wow, the power of humility. A colleague of mine, who is actually here in this room, giggled when he heard I was going to be one of the speakers today. He said, Yvonne, talking about humility? This should be interesting. <laughs> Many of us struggle with what humility truly is, maybe because we don't want to be perceived as humble. Humility, after all, is often regarded as weakness. The famous novelist C.S. Lewis says, true humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. Oh my goodness, what an amazing shift in perception. Easy for us to wrap our heads around from the point of view of servant leadership, because people say, what is servant leadership? How can I do it? How does it get done? Think of yourself less, not less of yourself. It really is a challenge, though. The power of humility is that it enables empathy, a key characteristic of servant leadership. And today I'd like to share with you thoughts on learning humility, understanding humility as an underlying principle of servant leadership, and exploring the benefits of servant leadership and humility. I will share how lessons from my servant leader journey from my childhood in Jamaica, my corporate life, and Greenleaf principles have helped to shape me. My first lesson in humility was from my grandmother who raised me in Jamaica. Here's the thing about Granny. She was a leader who literally was a servant. She had risen to the head of the household, the main housekeeper, for the Governor General of Jamaica, where she controlled the lives of staff, chambermaids, cooks, laundry women, chauffeurs, gardeners, you name it. And at times, as we all know, she even controlled the Governor General himself, <laughs> the Queen's emissary, and she controlled me. Granny had a way of communicating authority, and it never occurred to me until later in life that this power that my grandmother wielded was at the hands of an eighth grade educated woman. No Harvard <coughs> business degree there. Jamaica was still a colony in the early 60s, and we were often visited by British royalty. You know, the governor general, chief guy on the island. It was not uncommon for me to be summoned to curtsy before the queen's sister, Princess Margaret, and other royals. No, I did not meet the queen. At times, they even delighted at my reading the newspaper for their entertainment. Of course, I considered that a privilege, and I was delighted to comply, as if I had a choice. Initially, I was nervous, but Grandma taught me that while it was important to respect their position, I should remember that deep down, we are all the same. Despite feeling intimidated, that was a powerful lesson to learn so early in life. But at a young age, there was this confusing mixture of pride, you know, feeling privileged to no royalty, and humility, which started to shape my self-esteem so early and respect for others. Granny was a generous woman who genuinely cared for others. From her, I learned one, that you did not challenge authority. And two, that if you wanted things done right, you had to be tough and tell people what they should do. <laughs> From her calm demeanor, I learned how to be humble and authoritative at the same time. Because a leader, by definition, needs to be authoritative. But that does not mean you can't be humble as well. 
because I learned the way one exerts one's authority can be dictated either by humility or arrogance. In his classic essay, The Servant as Leader, Robert Greenleaf characterized humility as a key virtue that creates or causes caring for others. Many since Greenleaf have come to describe servant leadership as a philosophy based on empathy rather than power plays. You know, I'm so empathetic that if I go to a restaurant and I order a meal and I don't like it, I order a to-go box and I take it home and throw it out because I don't want to offend the chef. That's a little bit, you know, but that's how I roll. <laughs> As an adult in the workplace, like my grandmother, I had become a curious blend of humility and command and control. I had a controlling style, because my grandmother was the boss. With my compassionate ways, it conflicted, and it fueled my struggle for humility. How many of you struggle with that in your work world? You want to be boss, and you want to tell people what to do, because it gets the job done, and being humble and empathetic and listening takes more time. I believe telling people what to do is the most expeditious way to get things done. No discussion, just do it. <laughs> However, bossiness is not a good trait. It may get things done, but guess what? It destroys trust and it kills innovation. Talk about something affecting the bottom line. By contrast, Max Weidman who is known for his contributions to the project management profession, he says humility has a role in business and it can contribute to the bottom line. He says humble leaders know how to ask for help. Now, I wanna share something with you. And this is tough. Jamaicans are fiercely proud people, often to our own detriment, because we do not know how to ask for help. Why? Pride. Pride prevents us from asking because you admit you don't know. Does that happen to you too? Have a hard time sometimes asking for help. But we can't authentically serve others unless we get outside ourselves and humble ourselves. As the Bible says, there's a reason, pride goes before a fall. Just as pride leads to every other vice, Humility leads to every other virtue. It is what enables all the principles of servant leadership. So how did this false pride serve me in my career? My career took me from file clerk, where I showed up to work in business suits and pumps, all the way to vice president. Granny taught me how to dress above the part. My jobs in corporate America went from supervising a call center to managing complex issues in several industries. On this journey without a blueprint or a career map, I landed in interesting and challenging positions as I navigated my way in the beginning without a role model or mentor. I was in the copper mining business. I didn't have any female role models then. Intuitiveness is a risky but valuable teacher, and it humbles you. I learned to bloom where I was planted. I had to learn how to direct and manage my staff eventually with resoluteness, but with understanding, using coaching and mentoring. Something difficult, I learned to share rather than withhold information. Information is power. To help my staff do their jobs better. It took a while for me to learn to let people make mistakes, oh my goodness, from which they could learn Lord, <laughs> that was so difficult for a controlling, perfection-oriented person. Try taming a type A personality with humility. When I worked for Miller Brewing, I once said to a boss who had just promoted me that I was tired of always being seen as a good guy, the nice person. Imagine that. I said, I decided that ruling with an iron fist and being feared like Alexis Carrington, <laughs> I go to would bring me respect and power. My boss, not knowing whether to take me seriously, 
replied, oh my goodness, no, no, no. You got this promotion because you are exactly who we want in this position. We want someone empathetic, kind, attentive, and someone who listens and who responds thoughtfully. Don't go changing, she said now, as if I could. Dr. Kent Keith, former Greenleaf president, talked about servant leadership as concerned with the success of all stakeholders. As an issues manager at Miller, I had to grapple with difficult social responsibility issues. There was one time where humility went much further than false pride would have taken me. The industry was split on a thorny ethical alcohol policy, and there were several parties in our coalition and we were going nowhere. I had an idea, and with permission, I reached out to Mothers Against Drug Driving and several members of the clergy to join our coalition. They were unexpected stakeholders. My bosses at Miller couldn't understand why I was talking to MAD, the arch enemy, or we, the arch enemy of MAD, and the clergy. We're talking beer here. But they came to the negotiation table and together with our distributors, retailers, and law enforcement, we developed a potentially controversial anti-drunk driving initiative, which the governor signed, because it served the public interest. We all came together on it. Weidman states how humble leadership builds trust. I thought power came with control, but you know, I learned humility goes further. Bringing stakeholders to the table resulted in a collaborative agreement with Matt and the others. And the lesson here is, trust yourself, be yourself, and sprinkle negotiations with humility. It's not misplaced. Another example of how humility informed my life was when I was recruited from the copper mining industry to Miller Brewing. I had gained a reputation as an expert witness before Congress. I used to do a lot of testimony in Washington, D.C. And Miller recruited me. So I went into Miller, new industry, depending on my same skill sets, right? Negotiating, talking, convincing. But when I arrived at Miller, I just chilled out. I just listened and listened. And I went to meetings, and I sought out executives and peers, and asked a lot of questions. I could have gone in there with a chip on my shoulder and said, hey, I'm the industry expert they hired. No, humility served me a lot better because I was able to build relationships and people really don't care about your expertise somewhere else. Stephen Covey's habit number five, seek first to understand. Dick talked about this earlier. Then to be understood. This is actually an important characteristic of servant leadership. It implies that we listen to another's point of view before we hurry to share our own without any attempt first to understand the other person's position. I love to ask questions and to listen to where people are coming from. Corporate humility in the mad case and my personal humility in the copper mining case went much further than if I'd gone in there with false pride. So much for humility providing positive outcomes. Let me share a time when lack of humility resulted in a disaster and deep sixed an initiative we were working on. As executive director at a nonprofit agency, I was caught between the boss and the board of directors. They were at odds with each other. I had to walk a tightrope between their competing and conflicting interests. There was no listening, patience, humility, or building trust. Consequently, the strategic plan that we spent a lot of days at a retreat working on was torn up and tossed away. Board members resigned, taking needed funding and expertise with them. I left for greener pastures, and a vice president was fired. It cost the organization its time, talent, and treasure because new staff and board members had to be recruited and new funding had to be sourced. I bet some of you have been caught up in similar governance matters in your nonprofit life, right? Even in your corporate life. Positive resolution requires 
humility. Now, I've had some formal management training since my early days of bobbing and weaving, where I had to sink or swim, and I often treaded water while my gut instincts kicked in. However, my moral compass and my personal values that I learned from my grandmother very early inform my decision making and management style. When I worked on Wall Street and when I ended up on Main Street serving communities. What I've shared with you here today is only the tiniest tip of the iceberg of what I call a servant leader journey. What I've learned is that it's not always easy and it isn't either or. Balance is the key. I am constantly reminded that to make a difference in this world requires keeping your eye on the prize, but even more important, recognizing that the change that we are working towards is bigger than we are. That's when you get outside this self-absorption. As for me, I have come to recognize that true humility is not thinking less of myself. It's thinking of myself less, and it takes courage and determination. Thank you for listening this morning. Thank you.